Hello everyone, today we have a very special guest, Dr. Wilson Wu. So Dr. Wu is my teacher and is a person who inspired me to study Chinese medicine. So welcome, Dr. Wu. Hello, Alice. Hello, everyone. Dr. Wu is a doctor in traditional Chinese medicine and a registered acupuncturist. He is also the president of the Canadian Qingwu Athletic Association and the principal and headmaster of YS Traditional Chinese Medicine and Martial Arts College. So he, in the college, he offers acupuncture services, traditional Chinese herbal prescriptions, and uh, classes in Qigong, uh, martial arts, and Tai Chi. So Dr. Wu also teaches at KPU and VCC, and the courses he teaches including TCM, Qigong, Tai Chi, and also I Ching, which is the Book of Changes, and other Eastern philosophies. So the reason why I invited Dr. Wu today um, in this channel is because I would like him to share some of his insights on traditional Chinese medicine and not just simple home remedies, but also a deeper philosophical, theoretic and applications of Chinese medicine and Qigong. So uh, without further ado, some of you might not know Dr. Wu well. So uh, let me first ask the question, Dr. Wu, how did you first get into Chinese medicine and Qigong? So uh, I began to learn Chinese martial arts from my uncles at the age of four. And when I was a teenager, I started studying uh, traditional Chinese medicine under my father's guidance and also assisting him uh, in treating some patients. And during my university uh, years, I delved into the study of uh, Yi Jing uh, or the Book of Changes. And over time, I sought out the teachers to deepen my knowledge and skills and uh, Eventually, developing and refining the systems uh, that integrates the Yi Jing, TCM, and uh, martial arts. So Dr. Wu is a master of many traditional Chinese arts. Um, like he just mentioned, martial arts, Tai Chi, Qigong, medicine, and also Feng Shui as well. And he is really good at calligraphy too. So next time I can show you. So Dr. Wu, I have a question is that as all the Chinese arts seems to have a core philosophy and a core um, basic foundation under it. So I just wonder, is there any similarities and what is the core foundation of that? Uh, I think the core foundation or the core concept in uh, in uh, TCM or uh, Kung Fu or Qigong, uh, they all based on the very uh, important concept, that is Qi. Uh, so what is qi? Originally, people believe that qi is uh, referred to the bioelectric energy inside our bodies. But recently, some modern scientists, uh, through the experiments and research, have discovered that qi is similar to the field emitted uh, by the uh, crystal, uh, known as the torsion field, spin field, or torsion wave. Actually, any matter with the Helical and spiral uh, structures inside, uh, or objects in spinning uh, motion, uh, can generate torsion field. So through the experiments done by the scientists, it was realized that qi and spinning field has the same uh, properties uh, that they can be absorbed by the water and dispersed when encounter encounter the wind. And uh, this logic actually. Uh, fit in with the ancient Chinese wisdom of the feng shui. And this is why in our living environment, it is considered good to hide the wind and stop the water. Uh, for example, having a house back up by the mountain in the north and facing the water in the south, uh, uh, as it uh, promotes good health. Mm, it's very interesting that how qi can be connected and related to many different arts in the Chinese culture. So what about, what is qi gong? Like, does that relate to like how we cultivate or develop qi or what does qi gong actually mean? Okay, so uh, in qi gong, gong actually uh, represents the effort we put into a qi and uh, such as acquiring energy qi studying the ancient culture or practicing martial arts so which uh, lead 
time and patient. Uh, and Qigong is one of the five main therapies in TCM, actually. Mentioned in the Huang Di Lei Jing, the classic of TCM. Uh, in ancient times, uh, different regions of China have their uh, specific uh, therapies, uh, like the moxa, uh, moxa pixpression in the north, and acupuncture in the south, uh, stone therapy in the east, and herbal therapy in the west. And in the middle region, uh, templates related, uh, where templates related, you know, the people easy to have the digestive problem, uh, digestive mm -hmm. system problem. So the people create the uh, uh, qigong to release the templates inside the bodies. So uh, actually, qigong at that time, uh, the people call it an qiao dao yu uh, in Huang Di Lei Jing. An means uh, press down the hands, qiao means lifting up the heels, and uh, uh, an qiao means the physical movement, and dao yu uh, means the using the mind to lead the qi. So an qiao dao yu is uh, 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 including the internal and external, including the physical movement and the internal mind leading. I see. So different therapeutic methods are originated in different parts of China. So regarding Qigong, what specific health benefits does it have? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Qigong is one of the five main therapies uh, used to treat many diseases, especially chronic conditions in the uh, digestive and respiratory systems. And Qigong is also beneficial for the joints and tendons, uh, both internally and externally. That's why I always encourage my students and patients to practice Qigong every day. Mm. And in TCM, you know, the focus is to uh, is on preventing the disease before they occur. As sometimes it is too late to address the concerns, uh, address the diseases uh, once they have developed. Yes. So as a Qigong practitioner, when you practice Qigong, it has all the health benefits that you mentioned. But what about as a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, um, when you do, let's say, acupuncture or as a martial artist, how can practicing Qigong help you in terms of that field? Okay, so uh, in my TCN clinic, during the acupuncture treatments, I like to use the flying needle uh, technique, which means when I uh, insert the needles to the acupoints, uh, uh, the needles will be twisted in eight circles before you insert it into mm -hmm. the patient's acupoint. And that is uh, we call the fine needle and can create uh, the stronger uh, spin, spin field. Mm -hmm. uh, we call the chi. So uh, you want me to... Uh, perform the fine needles techniques on you and then let you to feel the difference. Oh, that would be great. I'm very looking forward to it. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so Dr. Wu has taken out his needles and tools and uh, I'm about to get needled. Okay, Alice, please put your two hands on the table. Okay. And then I will do the uh, normal techniques on your left hand and the fly needle technique on your right hand. Mm -hmm. And I will choose the acupoint large intestine 4 and which is uh, connected our digestive uh, system. And it's also good for the tonifying the, the qi. Okay. The first one I use the patting technique. So use the tube and then patting the needles inside the acupoint LI4. Ah. Okay. And then I will use the fly, fly needle technique. So that means before the needles go into the acupoint, it will be uh, twisted in. Uh, about eight circles before you insert it to the uh, acupoint. See? Okay. 
So what's the difference? Oh, wow. There's actually quite a difference. So on my left hand, where it is the um, normal technique where he taps the needle in, uh, I do not feel as much strong of the chi energy as much as my right, which um, which uh, Dr. Wu used the flying needle technique. Um, so in Chinese medicine, what we call like the qi, right? The yeah. um, getting the energy. Getting the energy. So in my right hand right now, it feels. I feel not only just the energy is stronger, but there's also a spiral type of energy feeling right on my on my pressure point on my right hand. So that's pretty amazing. Okay. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I I will pull out the needles. Okay. I use the cotton cotton ball. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then I wish we can do more. <laughs> yeah. Tonify the chi for Alice. Yeah. Let him to have more uh, power. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wu. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that was amazing. So now what about the martial arts side of it? Okay, uh, regarding the three main internal Kung Fu uh, uh, styles, Sing Yi, Ba Gua, Tai Chi, right? They all emphasize on the circular movements, but each of them focus on the different directions of the circles. Sing Yi involves the uh, longitudinal uh, vertical circles, I this way. Longitudinal vertical circles. And Bagua uh, utilized the horizontal circle. Uh, you can see the Bagua walking, circular walking, right? And uh, the torso twisting uh, all belongs with the horizontal circle. While Tai Chi incorporates both uh, longitudinal uh, vertical circles, right, Hang Ji, and uh, horizontal circles, turn left and turn right, right, the low back techniques, and uh, but uh, also have the left and right vertical circles in Tai Chi. This is special circles we call it uh, Mao Yu, uh, small universe. So the longitudinal vertical circles we call the Zimu uh, universe. Uh, later I will explain this in details in the future, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. And particular in Bagua, when we perform the circular walking qigong, we execute both revolution and uh, rotation, uh, similar to the Earth in the solar tracking system, creating much stronger torsion field actually. That's why I focus on the internal Kung Fu training and teaching to get the strong Qi. I hope you enjoyed today's interview and there will be more Dr. Wu interview sessions coming up, so stay tuned. Lastly, don't forget to follow Dr. Wu's social media platforms on Facebook, YouTube, and also his website. There are a lot of amazing contents on health, Qigong, and Chinese martial arts. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.